Welcome to church this Sunday, January 24th, 2021. I'm your music director, Kevin Nave, and I hope this morning finds you happy and healthy. If you'd raise your voices with me for our opening hymn, it is Take My Life and Let It Be, number 399 in your hymnal, verses 1 and 3. Good morning. I'm Margaret Hazlett, our lay liturgist for this morning. Our invitation to worship this morning is based on the writings of Crystal Siegel Linslin from Good Shepherd United Methodist Church in Richmond, Virginia. Let's be in an attitude of prayer as we enter into this time of worship. Now is the time to live, to come to the God who creates us, to sing to the Redeemer who frees us. Now is the time to come alive to invite the whole world to join in praising God? Yes, now is the time to invite the sky to thunder God's word, the earth to rumble in praise. We invite all to celebrate with us, to glorify God's name, to dance with God's spirit, which fills us. Each one of us is a gospel written by God's hand. Each one of us is a witness to God's goodness, love, and forgiveness. May we have spiritual eyes to see heavenly meaning interwoven amidst the mundane tasks of our everyday lives. May we be present to our loving God and to one another as we explore our witness and tell others of all that God has done and is doing in and through us. In the name of Jesus the Christ and in the power of God's Holy Spirit, welcome to worship. And I'm Reverend Cora Glass. We also want to welcome you to worship this morning. Everything you may want to participate in today's service of worship can be found on our website, waterfordcumc.org. We also send that information out on Thursdays in an email. You can contact our church office to be added to that email list. Reverend Heat Cora here with a message for our kids and kids at heart. Do any of you own a Beanie Baby? When I was a child, Beanie Babies were one of the coolest things to own. Beanie Babies were stuffed animals with a heart tag on their ear. 
and the tag told you the animal's name and its birthday, and it even had a little poem. I was told that one day my Beanie Babies would be worth a lot of money, but they'd be only be worth money if that tag was still in their ear. You could even buy a plastic case to put around the tag to help keep it safe, or you could keep it in a plastic box to make sure it never got touched. But what good is a toy if you can't play with it? I remember playing school and tag and house with my Beanie Babies, but being very cautious that it stayed as perfect as possible. Sometimes protecting my Beanie Babies felt more important than having fun with my friends. Looking back now, having fun with my friends would have been so much better if I wasn't so concerned about my Beanie Babies and their tags. Sometimes we worry so much about our things and even ourselves looking perfect and and being right that we forget to really get into all that's fun about life around us. We might not try taking a risk or trying out a dream we have or making a change because we're not sure if we can do it perfectly or flawlessly. The good news is God never asked us to be perfect or flawless. In fact, God loves us when we make mistakes, when we have scars, when we make things hurt. Um, God can love all of that. God loves even the ripped up, tags torn off, well-loved Beanie Babies just as much as those that we kept in the box with the tag on. All of these are priceless in God's eyes, and the same is true with us. I think we can say a prayer together to thank God that this is all true. I'll start, and you can repeat after me. Let's pray. God of all creation, you love us always. When we are scared, when we are scarred, when we are perfect, cautious, or bold, new to something, or a professional, keep loving us today and always. Amen. Friends, we come into a time of prayer, and I know that my uh, mic wasn't picking up. That is my fault. Uh, all I said basically in the beginning was to welcome you, remind you of uh, recording your attendance during the service, and also if you have any prayer requests, please uh, send them to that number which is uh, on your screen, and that will get to me also. Several of you uh, did, in fact, uh, must have heard the request or know the routine and did share your prayer request. So thank you for that. If anybody else wants to share a prayer request right now, you may do so. As I share with you uh, the, uh, the requests that have been updated on our prayer list. This prayer list is sent out uh, on Thursdays. It is sent to your, e- your emails. I get it every, uh, every, every week. You can receive it every week. You can call a church office to get on that email listing so that you'll receive it each week also. It's also downloadable from our, uh, from our website. So I want to mention uh, that Vivian uh, Geraldine Eddy passed away. She's been a member of our church since 1996. She's been living uh, in, in the southern states. Uh, her uh, son contacted us on Monday, and there will be a celebration of her life sometime in September, and she'll be interred right here in our memorial garden at Central Church. Uh, Betty Pfeiffer would have us be mindful of her sister Barb, who is uh, seeking medical treatment at this time. Uh, Pam Coleman Gay uh, was uh, to have outpatient surgery yesterday. That was the plan. She uh, developed a fever and is back in the hospital. Uh, In texting her this morning, she should be home uh, come home by about noon today. Deborah Hayden Smith, Smith, father Jim Hayden, uh, is having some health issues, and so we want to keep Jim in our prayers as well as Deborah's mom, Pat, and her sisters who are caring uh, for Jim. Keep him in our prayers. We heard from Irene Kuznikov's uh, family this past week. Irene is in hospice care. Uh, there were some wonderful pictures that were shared. Uh, Irene was a uh, fixture here in this church in my early years of ministry, and uh, Walter, of course, we celebrated his life as he passed away a few years ago. 
But we want to keep Irene in our prayers at this time, especially. We have folks, friends, who are in continued care. We want to remember Kathy Scafiri, who's uh, starting another round of chemo uh, tomorrow. Beth Perry is going to be beginning uh, radiation treatment uh, for her cancer, which on Tuesday. We want to remember Ernie Bauer's brother, David, and his wife, Anne. Uh, David is uh, in the midst of uh, cancer treatment and uh, is very, very ill at this time, uh, not only because of the disease, but the treatment as well. But uh, we want to keep him in our prayers as well as Anne. Uh, Helen England had surgery uh, to uh, place a, a pacemaker within her. And I'd like to offer a celebration <clears throat> for the uh, peaceful inauguration day this past Wednesday, uh, honoring the long-held tradition of that peaceful transfer of power in our nation. Let me see if there's any other prayer requests. I think we've got everything covered. We'll have just a short uh, prayer of, of silence, a silent prayer, time of silent prayer. Then we'll have the caring prayer, and then we'll unite our voices in the prayer that Christ taught us, the Lord's Prayer. <clears throat> O oh God, you call us into agreement with one another. You urge us to end the divisions among us. How is this even possible? With fence clenched and jaws set, we sometimes grip tightly our perspectives and opinions, ready to battle with anyone who would challenge us. We worship too often the gods of being right, desperate to belong somewhere. We claim allegiance to tribes of of our own, our own mean, tribe of doctrine, tribes of politics, tribes of social location. Our quarrels reach your ears, and even as we stammer out our excuses, we know it is not your way. Your way is excellent. Your way is relationship. Your way is discipleship and neighborliness and servanthood. Your way transcends the dim, dim we might fashion from earthly assets. And your way seems impossible for us to imagine. Help us. Help us, Lord, to not only imagine it, but to work for it. Let the fellowship we have in worship continue beyond our time together. Help us to imagine being together, sitting down together, and enjoying fellowship with one another. One another. Imagine it for us, gracious God. Imagine it within us. Show us how to drop the nets. Fill our meager catch which we clutch to ourselves out of paltry security, out of self-identity. Self we just discovered that you are able to accomplish abundantly far more than we can ask or imagine. And then teach us to share your better identity for us. Make us into your fishers of people as we witness to your power of love. Let us be one community with all our faults, all of our, our foibles, and yet held in your nets of grace. This is your way. We long for it. For it. We pray for it. In the name of Christ, who taught us to say when we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, who would be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Chapter 19. Verses 1 through 7. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the inland regions and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, No, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, Into what then were you baptized? They answered, Into John's baptism. Paul said, 
John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Altogether, there were about 12 of them. Our second reading comes from Ephesians, chapter 3, verses 20 through 21. Now, to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Friends, in preparation for the message, if you've printed up or, or have it on your device, the message notes, you can follow along, fill in the blanks, write in the margins. There's also a large space there for an interview, which I think you'll find uh, helpful this uh, morning. Uh, we went to the message. Let's, let's pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord. For you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. One of the uh, traditions in our home uh, during the Christmas season is to decorate with the, with the McVille popular Department 56 uh, collections. Uh, the organist from a former church began uh, this uh, collection for me by giving me my first piece, which was a, a, a post office set in the Dickens era in the 1800s. And so uh, we've had uh, the opportunity to put that up, and I have well over 50 pieces now, uh, 50 buildings, uh, and then people and trees, all kinds. If you've never seen it, it's a huge display, but it's a lot of fun to put together, and I've had people in the church help me put it up, and uh, people uh, help me take it down this past Christmas. My daughter said that she'd like to uh, begin her own collection. And I, so I told her to come and help me put the village pieces away. And we'll begin her collection by giving her, giving her some of my village. And as, was, as I was teaching her to put some of the pieces away, I, I told her about one piece in particular. Actually, it was the ghost of Christmas present. Uh, that when I bought it, it was broken. But I fixed it with some super glue and was particularly cra uh, proud of that fixed job as I pointed out the nearly invisible crack that I super glued together. That type of, of uh, fix is appropriate for small pieces that are part of a much larger setting. But it's contrary to a Japanese method of fixing pottery that I learned about some decades ago, but is probably familiar to some of us today. That method is called kintsukuri kuroi, um, uh, and, it's, and it means golden repair. When a precious piece of pottery is broken, a Japanese artist will mix lacquer resin with some gold dust and then uh, use the resin to fix the cracks in that precious pottery. What they end up with is, is a pot with cracks in it, but the cracks are filled with gold. Golden repair. Such a, restor such a restoration creates a gorgeous piece of art and makes a philosophical statement as well. Kinsukuroi asserts that breakage and repair is part of the history, the unique history of an object, rather than something to deny or disguise. Seems to me, friends, that we sometimes need more golden repair in our lives because we so often hide our brokenness. A friend hurts us deeply and we retreat inside of ourselves. We, we lose a job or we suffer a pay cut and pretend like everything is, is, okay, is okay. A spouse abuses us and we never speak up. We sense that we have a drinking problem, but we're too embarrassed to seek help. A marriage begins with intimacy and, 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 and patience it ends with alienation and anger. Life breaks us in a variety of ways. And unfortunately, we often deny it. We would rather disguise our cracks uh, than undergo, undergo a golden repair. In Acts, the Apostle Paul travels to Ephesus in Asia Minor, which is modern-day Turkey, and he finds 12 disciples there. 
And he asked them, did you not receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? And they said, no, we've never even heard of the Holy Spirit. And while it might be a stretch to say that the disciples were broken, there's clearly something missing. Gaps and cracks in their faith experience. Not only have they not received the Holy Spirit, they've never even heard of God's Spirit. Paul understood that those early believers needed some golden repair, some kinsukuroi Christianity. So Paul lays hands on them and the Holy Spirit enters them. We might call what happened to those disciples the golden repair of the Holy Spirit. That experience in the life of those disciples grew their understanding and their experience of faith in God. Friends, over many years, decades of ministry, I've seen people healed uh, through the help of others and the power of God's presence. Through valleys of physical challenges, broken relationships, and unthinkable losses, I've seen many people reach out for healing and wholeness. Their scars, whether they're physical or emotional or psychological, become like the golden repairs of Kinsukuroi. Beautiful reminders of the power of God's healing in their life. Since early December, friends, we've been recommending uh, the, music of, the music video from the Christian group Mercy Me, featuring the story of Gary Miracle, uh, uh, who has uh, a connection with our church. Gary has been on our prayer list uh, for a year now since he went into the hospital on New Year's Eve 2019. Uh, that hospitalization resulted in the, in the removing of Gary's hands and, and legs. I had the opportunity to connect with Gary, and I want you to see our interview as a witness to the tremendous depth of Gary's faith as we talk about what his life has been like in this past year. Hey friends, uh, I'm here with Gary Miracle. Uh, you've heard of him, you've seen him in the video, uh, which features the band Mercy Me. Uh, he has a connection with our congregation. I'm gonna let him share what that connection is, but we're blessed to have him with us and, uh, and to talk to us about his faith in the midst of what I consider to be uh, true trials uh, in his life. Hey Gary, how you doing? Hey, good, Pastor. Thanks so much uh, for allowing me to to have this opportunity, and and thank you, Church, for uh, listening. <laughs> and I'm not sure that you have too much of a choice, but here we are. <laughs> tell us a little bit about your connection to our church, yeah. and then, uh, tell us uh, just begin that story about what happened uh, on uh, New Year's Eve. Uh, but my connection to you guys specifically is my beautiful grandmother, uh, Lavon Long. Um, and she has been such a huge integral part of my life. And Grandma, I love you. Thank you so much for who you are. Uh, but she is there with you guys. And I know that she has just spread uh, my story across as many people as she could come in contact with. And, and I swear I'm only here right now able to talk to you guys because of the amount of people across this world that have been praying for me. So thank you guys so much uh, for praying for me and being there and, and just being uh a support system behind the scenes it means the world to me and thank you so much so tell us what happened on, on uh, new year's yeah. Eve, uh, 2020 right it was new year's 2019 Eve. Um, 2019 one, yes we just celebrated the great one year anniversary here but um, mm -hmm. on new year's eve 2019 i i was super sick i i had strep throat and that strep got into my bloodstream and caused an infection and the night of New Year's Eve, it was actually New Year's Day, about 2 a.m., I fell into septic shock. And they put me in an induced coma. They airlifted me to a hospital in Orlando, Florida, which is about an hour away from where I live. Um, and it was there that I spent about three hours uh, before I was I was laying on the hospital bed. And um, I, I my body stopped working. Um, I coded. Um, I fell into uh, just darkness. I fell into death, and and I was I was gone for about seven and a half minutes. Uh, I believe they told me, and and my wife was in the room. Um, fortunately, unfortunately, kind of however you want to think about that, but uh, she was saying it was just like out of the movies. People jumping on top of me and pounding on my chest, and uh, she ran out of the room. She collapsed on the floor. 
Uh, her friends were laying on the floor with her and, and the doctors came out about 15, 10 to 15 minutes later, I believe. I, I don't honestly remember this part. Um, so uh, the doctors came out and and my wife said she just started screaming, don't tell me, don't tell me, don't say it, I don't want to hear it, assuming that the doctor was, was going to tell her that I didn't make it. And um, God's not done with me yet, I guess. And then the doctor looked down at her and told her that they found a slight pulse and, and uh, they kept me on oxygen that whole time by the grace of God. And uh, which, which left me my brain activity. Uh, my brain was never deprived of oxygen. So, so I have no lasting effects of this. Um, and God just had his hand kind of all over. So that was a long story long, um, kind of what happened and, and the initial step, the initial day of it all. And you had to make some decisions about your care and the resulting surgeries that removed uh, uh, both of your uh, arms and uh, both of your legs. And uh, yeah. uh, what was that? Uh, you thanked us for our prayers, but what was your prayer life and uh, that with your closest friends and family in your church uh, in terms of God's presence? So my prayer life at that time uh, was pretty non-existent because I, I was pretty non-existent. I don't remember too much. Um, I was on a lot of medications and the memories that come into my life happened a little bit about a month or so after I woke up from my coma. Um, it was my family that went through it all. And there was a moment that my wife just kind of gave up and she sat down and she wrote, I want to say it was about 50 different index cards of scripture and posted them all over my hospital room. And she printed out pictures of me. Uh, and posted them all over the hospital room. And she wanted um, <clears throat> the the purpose of that. She wanted the doctors and the nurses to know who they were trying to save. And I wasn't just a patient, but I was a, I was a man and a husband and a father. And she tells the story so much better than I do. Um, <laughs> but she posted scripture and, and the amount of people that laid hands on me and pastors would come in and, and anointed me with oil when I was in my coma. And the amount of faith that other people had kept my life going a hundred percent. As far as decisions go, my wife had to make that decision um, on my behalf to take away my hands and, and my arms and my legs. Um, they told me about it after the fact, but she was forced to make the decision um, either take my limbs or take my life. And, and her words were just let me have him. However, I can get him back with no arms, no legs, nothing, just keep them alive. So that's what mm -hmm. they did. And, and then they told me what was about to happen to me. Um, they told me that I was going to lose my arms and legs. And, and I don't know, pastor, I don't know if it was the amount of people that prayed over me. I don't know if it was just, I'm sure it's a combination of all of these, but, but God himself just kind of looking down on me and giving me, Truly, truly, and this is not cliche, this is not a, a Christianese answer, but that peace that passes all understanding, mm. because my very first thought was the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. And, and right now it's time for him to take away and he's going to take away my hands and legs, but blessed be the name of the Lord. I, I'm thinking of the scripture where, um, you know, we're told that when we, when we don't have words for prayer, the Holy Spirit will give us those words. And so God's presence obviously yeah, yeah. on you. And God's spirit was resting with you. So uh, do you have an, any idea uh, or any uh, thing to say about how you might have experienced God during this time? I think the biggest way that I experienced God was the fact that I did not fall into depression. Um, after hearing all of this news of things that were, th well, things that happened to me, um, things that I went through that my family had to walk through, uh, things that I was about to go through, news that I was losing my limbs. The fact that that didn't phase me just gave me that that understanding that God was there with me, and 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 I think I, I even said at one point, you know, God God could have easily, very easily, one, He could have very easily not done any of this, right? Uh, he could have very easily not. I could have not gotten sick. This could have not happened. But He could have also very easily just taken one of my hands and left me with everything else. He could have taken both of my hands and left me with my legs. But 
we serve a guy who does big things, right? Uh, so <laughs> he decided that it was fit for me to lose everything. And I know in my heart, I know, I know, I know that I don't serve a God that makes mistakes. And, and he wouldn't have done this to me if he didn't have something for me on the other side. Um, and man, that something for me could very well be this interview right here, being blessed with the opportunity to talk to you and whoever is listening to this. You know, if, mm. if one person, just one person can enter the gates of heaven because of something that I went through, and bring it on. I would do it all again. And I, mm. and I, I promise you that I just, I'm, I'm desperate for God to get his glory uh, through this and that his story will not go in vain. So you're living into a new reality. Mm -hmm. uh, how, uh, how is that going from, uh, from the, the challenges of this past year to where you are today? It's, it's very, very different. Life is very different for me. Um, but uh, God's blessed me with an incredible wife, uh, incredible kids that have stepped up uh, and and just filled a role in this new normal that we're living in. And God's given me a strong heart. I'm off a lot of the medications that I was taking, and I'm back out on the football fields coaching. I'm back out on the soccer fields coaching. Um, you know, I, I, I asked my kids permission before I did that because I don't want to embarrass them or or have kids bully them because of something that I went through or the way that I look. And without hesitation, they looked me in the eyes and told me they didn't care what I look like and they wanted me out there with them. So uh, the new normal is very different as far as what I look like, how I, how I dress myself, how I feed myself, but nothing's different about the things that we're doing. We still go out to eat to dinner. We still go uh, to the mall. We still go to football games and, and, and it looks different, but, it's all the same. Uh, sounds like you've uh, uh, learned a lot about God, but uh, let me move on beyond that to say, what have you learned about yourself, Gary? I'm still figuring that out. I'm still, I still punch my pillow and I still get angry. I'm still human and the flesh comes out and, and the flesh side of me just screams why and, and, and cries out of nowhere. Um, and, and the spirit side of me, you know, puts me back on my feet and grounds me a little bit. So I'm still trying to figure out exactly what God's trying to do in my life. So hopefully we can continue to do things like this. And as I grow, I'll continue to share those answers. Yeah. It's a new calling, it sounds like, in your life. You didn't fall into depression. I find that yeah. an incredible a blessing. And I, I'm just thinking of, of how we just celebrated uh, Christmas and you know, the light of uh, God coming into the world through Christ and the darkness will not overcome it. Uh, you have received a, 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 a more than your portion, it would seem, uh, of darkness and that the light, it has not overcome the light of Christ in you. No, and I'm, and I'm fighting for that. I'm fighting to make sure that, that Christ stays the center of attention and that nobody feels sorry for me and I don't consider myself any different than, than you or, or anyone else that's listening to this and in the, in the ways that, that all of us have struggles. And I think, I think each one of us uh, is, is fighting a battle of some sort. And each one of us, you know, Satan can grab a hold of when we lay our head on our pillows at night and we could all fall into a depression for something. Um, you know, we're all struggling with something at the end of the day. My struggles are just more visible than yours. You can see my struggles. You can see that I don't have hands and it's hard for me to pick up a cup. You can see that, that I don't have legs and I can't just pop up off the couch and, and go and walk to the front door and answer it. But I can't see your struggles. I can't see the people that are battling that depression that we're talking about. I can't see the people that are, that are struggling in their marriage or struggling with their finances that, that, that really make people lose sleep at night. And, and I know that we're all going through it. And there's no difference from, from me than you, except for I don't have hands and legs. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to um, I'd like to ask you, how can we pray for you right now? Yeah, please. Um, right now, I am I am fighting tooth and nail to get on my feet and to get walking, um, to get out of this wheelchair. I've been I've been sitting down for over a year now, and and I mm. and I'm in physical therapy right now, and I just need the strength and the stamina to to keep fighting. Um, but outside of me, just my family, as what's happening right now is as I become more independent, as, a, as I need less and less help intending to 
my family now has the opportunity to step out of survival mode, I guess you would say. And now mm-hmm. they have an opportunity to grieve and to go through the trauma. And, and that's a real thing. Now that I'm no longer their patient, <laughs> you know, that they have to take care of me and, and they're allowed to be free. It's very easy for them, you know, to, to start that grieving process that I mentioned of everything that's happened over the past Absolutely. year. And we just need, uh, to like I had mentioned, keep Christ the center of attention in our family, and and that's the last thing that Satan wants to do. So that's the first thing we got to pray for. Um, so right. please pray for me uh, that that Christ remains that center, and and in my family as well right now. Uh, let's let's give your family uh, a little shout out there. Uh, Absolutely. Tell me your children's name. Absolutely, my beautiful wife. Uh, her name is Kelly. Uh, she's a saint. She is an absolute saint. Uh, to take care of me, and and I'm her husband, her patient, her everything that you could come Mm. to. She's she's incredible. I have four beautiful children. Uh, My daughter is 16 years old. Um, Goodness gracious, she will be 17 in about two weeks. Today is my oldest son's 10th birthday. His name is Asher. Uh, My daughter's name is Joanna, Um, and my oldest son's name is Asher. Uh, My middle son's name is Walter. He is eight years old. And my youngest son's name is Henry, and he is six years old. So I have four kids, and we are on the go. I don't have time to feel sorry for myself. I got I to go. <laughs> it's crazy. Let's, let's pray now. Please do. Gracious God, we do thank you for this time together with Gary. We, we ask that your a blessing uh, fall upon uh, Kelly and Joanna and Asher and Walter and Henry. We ask that your blessing be upon our church as we hear uh, Gary's testimony and uh, what a testimony it is. And uh, we know that uh, it is his desire um, that uh, to walk. And uh, may that be a way that uh, your creation be, can be glorified uh, through Gary's body, through the care that he receives, and through the strength that he exhibits uh, throughout this entire process. We ask that your blessing be with us as we continue to pray for he and his family, for him and his family. In Christ's name we pray, and in the power of your Holy Spirit, amen. Amen. Thanks Thank for you this. so much. Great. God bless you, and uh, uh, we hope to do this again maybe sometime. Yes, hopefully we'll be up there live in person maybe next time. We'll be Ooh, up there this summer so fun. we can figure something out. And Grandma, I love you so much. All right. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Pastor. The gift of the Holy Spirit, that's pure gold. Suddenly the gaps in the lives of those disciples with whom Paul prayed for and uh, with, uh, they were made whole as disciples of Christ. But But note there's no deny or disguise their deficiencies. Instead, God filled the cracks of their lives with the gift of the Holy Spirit, making them stronger and more beautiful in the broken places. That is what Gary bore witness to today. That's golden repair. That's Kinsukuri uh, Christianity. In her book, uh, Flick Work, The Aesthetics of Mended Japanese Ceramics, Christy Bartlett writes, quote, not only is there no attempt to hide the damage, but the repair is literally illuminated. Not hidden, not disguised, literally illuminated. As Gary spoke of his desire to glorify God, even through this incredibly truly true time in life and in the life of his family, I couldn't help but think of, think of the Apostle Paul, who wrote about this thorn in his flesh, some sort of, of a medical condition which left him struggling. And he asked God to take that away from him three times, but that didn't happen. And so Paul concluded that it was God's will that he find power through his weakness So Paul wrote, so I will boast all the more gladly of my weakness so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Paul proclaimed that God's grace is sufficient for him. And he allows for the cracks in his bodies and his life to be filled with God's Holy Spirit. That's what I see happening in the life of Gary Miracle. And I believe his witness to us today is to allow the same to happen in our lives no matter the nature of the cracks in our own lives and bodies. 
poet and songwriter Leonard Cohen wrote in his poem titled Anthem, Bring the bells that still can ring. Forget your perfect offering. There is a crack, a crack in everything. That's how the light gets in. So let's not deny, disguise, or hide our brokenness. Each of us have gaps and cracks. Instead, let's let the light of Christ uh, fill us and the power of Christ to make us beautiful and strong and whole. I'd like to conclude today's message with the words from the doxology that has been a part of our services so far this year. Paul's words from, from Ephesians 3, verses 20 and 21. Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask and imagine. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. And friends, that's the word of God for the people of God today in the name of our creator, redeemer, and sustainer. Amen. Friends, we're going to offer, uh, receive an offering now. Uh, Central is a member-supported organization, so your tithes and your offerings help us to continue the ongoing operations, missions, and ministries of our church. I want to thank you for your generosity in this past year. Uh, even as we are in the beginning of this year, 2021, uh, we are doing well to move forward in our mission and ministry. Uh, you can continue to give by sending your offering to, to the church through the through the There's all information on the screen and how to that electronically or by texting. Again, thank you for your generosity. Let's enjoy the beautiful offering that June has prepared for us. Let us pray. God of love and power, we know that we have been called to live and abide in your love and grace. We know, too, that you trust us to live that word in our daily lives. Please receive now our gifts, our, our, our lives, and our loyalty, and empower us anew to be your servants of love and ministry. Transform our lives and our offerings so that we may be disciples of your grace and love, Abide in us always, God, and through our gifts, practice your actions of kindness and hope and peace in all the world. Amen. Thank you for worshiping with us this morning. I specifically want to lift up and thank Gary Miracle for being with us uh, uh, through the testimony offered in the interview. I hope you found it meaningful. It looks like some you are expressing that, and, and thank you for that. Uh, did you hear it toward the end of that interview? Gary says, wouldn't it be wonderful if he was vi to visit us uh, personally? Wouldn't that be a wonderful day? Uh, we'll keep you abreast of what's happening with that. But uh, may, God, may Gary's witness inspire us to view the difficulties in our lives, the, the cracks that wound and scar us, as opportunities to allow the light of God's love and grace to shine in and through us. I hope you're blessed today, friends. Stay safe. And God bless you.
Let's raise our voices together one more time for our closing hymn, number 130 in your hymnal, God Will Take Care of You, verses 1 and 4. Be not dismayed, what have we God will take care of you. Beneath his wings of all of mine, God will take care of you. God will take care of you through every day or all the way. He will take care of you. God will take care. God give you the courage to walk in the paths of peace, patience that outlast the troubles of the day, joy that radiates from the inside out, love that erases barriers and heals wounds, kindness that touches hearts, gentleness that cherishes children and enjoys all of creation. May God go with us to love, love, and serve in God's world. Amen.